Hello everybody, welcome to another video of Andrew and Nicole. Today we're going to do something different from the usual unboxing or reviews or overviews of the gadgets that I have. Today we're going to share something that is a part of my experience. I worked in a bank for eight, to, um, eight years and above and I've somehow rotated on the different departments of the bank and I already have some basic knowledge on the banking and I want to take this opportunity to share to you to give you a refresher or an, or an overview of what banking is. Now I've been a investment specialist, I've been a department uh, distributions of sales, operations, and also a branch manager. So I hope that my experience could help you, the ordinary folks who are non-bankers, to understand what banking is. So if you're ready, why don't we go dive in and see what's up with our video today. So Banking 101 for Non-Beginners. This is a, a series that I'm planning to do. This is video number one. So we're going to answer this question. Why do we call banks banks? Okay, we'll answer that question later on. So the discussion topics is, of course, we'll give you a short history of the banks. What is the function of the bank? What is the role of the bank? How do banks earn? You might be wondering where do banks get all the money and how do they use the money and what are the channels for you to transact in the bank and what are the different kinds of banks aside from the small banks or big banks there are of course many different kinds of banks all right so let's give you a trivia if you can see this picture this is a picture of actually jesus in the temple confronting all the merchants, all right? So notice the table, okay? So in the, the term bank actually came from an old Italian word, or at least an Italian word, banca, or in, in Filipino, banco, okay? That's why in Philippines, we call banks, ban banco, say banco, okay? Or a table or bench where the 14th century traders change goods and coins, okay? So that's the word trivia for banks. Number two, the early concepts of banks is actually come, came from the goldsmiths of the 17th century. All right, what they do is there's a certain goldsmith who has a big vault. Okay, the people wanted to, to seek for their services to safe keep all the gold in the vault. Okay, so in exchange for a certain fee. Now over time, what the goldsmith did is that they would lend the gold to other people because those people who has more gold, they don't need it to be spent. They put it in a big vault with the goldsmith. So the goldsmith in return would lend that gold to another person. Okay, so those who have more gold and those who do not have gold and the banks and the goldsmiths in the middle is the intermediary. Now that is the basic concept of the bank. So the role of the bank is, is like a middleman, okay? For example, you have Pedro or, and John. Pedro doesn't have money and John has a lot of money he does not intend to spend, but he'd rather save. So to illustrate, let me show you this diagram, okay? So we have the savers like John, who has a lot of money, and we have borrowers like Pedro, who, or at least John, who, who has enough money, you know? So the banks is in the middle, okay? So all the banks acts as the middleman for both the savers and the borrowers. This is the simplest term of banking, actually. So all the savers would put all their money as deposits to the bank, and the bank would lend it via loans to the borrowers, okay? And the borrowers, of course, if you borrow something, you have to return it. And you, you return it, the principal, of course, plus the interest. So, so what the banks did for the savers, for letting them hold your, hold your money, they also pay interest to the savers. So the withdrawals are allowed by the bank, so the savers can also withdraw anytime from the bank. Okay, the bank acts as a financial institution who acts as a middleman for both the savers 
and the borrowers. Now, the interest, okay, is the one way for the banks to earn money. Okay, if you notice in my picture, so you have the borrowers who borrows money, let's say 1,000, and they would pay 5% to the bank for allowing them to use that fund. So 1,000, 5% of that is 50 pesos or 5 pesos, something like that. Now, the banks in return would pay the difference, okay, pay, pay the savers 1%, okay, to the savers. So the difference of this one, the 5 and the 1, the 4% is the income of the bank. Now, of course, the, the bank has many other expenses that you would say, hey, the banks are earning so much, so much, so much. Yes, they are, but they also have other expenses that they would need of the interest income. Okay, so in a perfect world, the banks is the perfect business in a perfect world. Why? Because if the borrowers are always paying the banks, and the banks have unlimited supply of savers, the bank would never lose money in terms of the interest. Okay, that's the basic gist of it. All right, so what other forms of income, or at least earnings that the banks have, aside from the interest? Majority of the, the income of the banks are coming from interest. Secondary are the fees for the different services. Okay, so sometimes whenever you go over the counter, you want to deposit or to want to withdraw, you have deposit fees, withdrawal fees, or even transfer fees, or if you want to make a manager's check or a cashier's check, you have to pay a certain amount to, to process that as a service fee. Okay, of course you have some safety deposit box fees if you want to put a, something precious inside the bank. Other processing fees, maintaining balance fees and underwriting fees. Now underwriting not all banks can do. I'll explain a little bit later or even in the next video what our underwriting are. Okay, so interest fees for services. Thirdly, the banks also trade into financial instruments. Okay, what are financial instruments you're asking me? These are the debt securities. Okay, what is debt security? Let me just simplify it. These are the, the papers that has a borrower and a lender that the banks trade up. Okay, this is still very confusing for you. I'll explain financial instruments in the future videos. And of course, they trade it because it's like a commodity. It's like a piece of ball pen. Okay? So the banks also have a trading mechanism wherein they can trade this piece of ball pen Say this piece of bobbin is 100 pesos and they want to trade it up to 120. So they make a 20 pesos margin or spread, okay, or income. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it, to trading. And of course, foreign exchange, just like currency, trading can be done for foreign exchange. Dollars to peso to euro to whatever. So every time they trade, they earn a spread. The basic concept is to buy low, sell high. So they're buying and selling of currencies and negotiable instruments. So these are the three main way the banks earn. It's simple. Okay? So whenever you go to the bank, there are many different channels to interact with the banks. So let me show to you the easiest and most intuitive way to go to the bank is to transact with the bank is over the counter. Okay, so you, as again, you go to the bank, physical bank. I know now you can do banking on different way, but the very traditional is over the counter. To deposit, to withdraw, to transact, to process whatever you need in the bank. Number two is the ATM or the automated teller machine. Wherein this, the good thing about the automated teller machine or the ATM is that it's 24 hours it's usually unmanned, so less expense for the bank, higher profitability, and for the convenience of the people, ATM 
That is the second technology. Now, as technology evolves, there came mobile phone banking. All right. For example, the well-known bank here in BDO, they have their own app in the phone, mobile banking. So you can do your banking transactions 24 hours a day, even though the bank is closed. And they also have telephone banking, the traditional telephone that you can call, dial it. You have a voice that is either voice recorded or you have somebody who answers and transacted the information for you. And nowadays, you can also do online. Okay, so you have majority of the banks worldwide already have online platforms for you to transact. Okay, so these are the basic channels of the bank. Channels meaning way for you to interact with the bank. So everybody is a target of the bank to reach. So you as the viewer, it's easy for you, convenient for you to go to, to transact with the bank or do business with the bank. So what are the different kinds of banks we have here and abroad? Now these are general kinds of banks. There are many more minute details, but I will try to explain to you the general sense. Okay? So we have the universal banks and commercial banks. Now, commercial banks, let's, let's go to the commercial banks. Usually commercial banks are those who are engaging into deposit taking to lending, to trading transactions, to giving services like vaults, uh, safekeeping, trust, okay? Now, their target usually for the universal bank and commercial bank is all, all scopes of this market segment from, from individual to corporate to big businesses to whatever, okay? and. What's the difference between the commercial bank and the universal bank? The universal bank has all the powers of the commercial bank, but the universal bank can do underwriting of securities. Now, when I say underwriting, it's another term in itself, but in a nutshell, underwriting is, is a way for one individual or one company to get funding from the public okay so similar to a uh, stock if you're into stock market the IPO something like that but underwriting is more on creating bonds or a negotiable instrument or a way for people to invest in that company of course with a certain amount of interest or return so the banks is the one or the universal banks can process those like they can partner with the borrower and of course the lenders and they create a instrument okay next are the thrift banks and savings banks now oh before i go to here universal banks and commercial banks in the philippines are actually plenty you know so similar to the top 10 banks or at least those who i deal with metro bank BDO, BPI, Security Bank, RCBC, these are all universal and commercial banks. The, 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 the next one is the thrift banks and the thrift savings banks. These are somehow a smaller scale bank. Okay, so they have more limited. Sometimes the thrift banks are not allowed to do, engage into trading. No financial underwriting. No basically a more limited scope of, of, of services. Similar to savings bank, their priority is to get deposits. Sometimes their lending is limited also. They cannot lend to so certain amount of individuals, certain amount, certain kinds of corporations. So these are more streamlined, okay? What are the samples of savings banks? Like China Bank Savings, HSBC Savings, or security bank savings or uh, smaller scale huh? now even smaller now these rural banks are those who are in the community okay these are even smaller than the usually the, the bigger banks here 
So, but they target the community in their surrounding location. So, for example, Rural Bank of Nicaragua, the Rural Bank of Sorsogon, the Rural Bank of Bicol. So, usually they are smaller scale, more limited, but they target and service the community that they have, they belong to. Okay? So, cooperative banks is another kind of bank that is like a board driven a group of people is the one operating the co cooperative bank they usually cater to a certain demographics for example soldiers okay all the soldiers can form a cooperative bank that helps other soldiers with a better interest rate lower lending rate so Target specifically, usually cooperative banks are into a smaller demographics of people. And we also have Islamic banks here in the Philippines, but very few. I'm not very familiar with the rules of the Islamic bank because I did not work in Islamic bank. But basically, these banks are those banks that are basing their, their way of doing business in Islam or within in Islam. So if you if you have transacted with Islamic banks or if you are part of Islamic banks, please sound off in the comments. Maybe you can share some more and to help our viewers on the Islamic bank. And there are also non-banks or quasi-banks. These are not categorized as bank, but they do banking functions. So for example, Paymaya or Gcash or, or Smart Padala or or PayPal. These are they technically are not bank, but they also handle money, and that is why they are also categorized as a bank and regulated actually by a government entity for for the banks here, the central bank. Okay, so these are non banks and quasi bank. Maybe remittance center. They also called maybe they can be serving as a quasi bank. Okay. So as you can see, there are multiple kinds of banks, maybe in order of scale and services. Now another form of banking that we have is called based on targeted segment or target market. So retail banks, usually for individuals or small medium businesses. Okay, in other countries they, they have retail banks that are really focused on these individuals or small businesses. Land banking, sometimes targeted for farmers, agricultural developments, or related to cultivating the land. Okay. Business or corporate banks are targeting usually the bigger businesses and corporates. And private banking, usually for high network individuals or families. Now, here in the Philippines, we have, we have different private banking that is also available, like BDO Private, HSBC Premier, or or at least uh, um, something that is tailor fit for those individuals who are so much so much money that they're looking for better and better and better investment rates. Okay, of course, investment banking also for activities related to financial markets. So usually, the investment banking are usually involved in the capital markets, getting. The public's fund okay, usually are in the invest, investment banking. Now, where does it fit in? In the slide a while ago, the universal bank. Usually the universal banks can do all of these. Okay, the universal bank can do retail, retail, business, corporate, private banking, investment banking. So that's why they call it universal. Okay. Okay, so in summary. I presented to you a very short history of the bank, very short in fact, and I shared to you the functions of the bank and also told you or at least informed you how do we earn as a bank and the different channels of the transact with the bank and what are the different kinds of bank. So if you learn something or interested to learn more, in my next video we'll be discussing this. Okay, what do you look for in selecting a bank? How do you scrutinize a bank? How do you open a bank account?
Okay, it's very easy. What are the usual products available in the bank? Okay, part of the product is a check. What is a check? What is interest or cost of money? I gave you a brief overview a while, a while ago, but you dive into more details on the interest. And this might be important to you. Is my money safe in the bank? Okay, so if you're interested, please stay tuned for the next video that we'll be releasing tomorrow or a day after this, this video. And if you learned something, please give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comments down below so that in the future videos, I can try to answer it. So again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to get an overview of the what bank is. And this is just a short video, a tip of the iceberg, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to share what I know and my experiences to you. And if you enjoyed, please again, like, share, and subscribe. And see you next time on my next video. Bye-bye.